So today we are cutting up this Specialized Tarmac Elite and in the words of Specialized, it climbs effortlessly, descends confidently and sprints ferociously. Well, not anymore because Rob from Carbon Bike Repair UK started chopping the frame. And I finished off the job. Now this is a four frame that I've cut, so we will compare it to a couple of the previous frames in this video, get Rob's overall opinion and report anything suspicious. What was that? So here we're looking at another major brand. The point of this exercise is not to pick on Specialized or any other brand, it's to show you what the major brands are doing in terms of how they're managing the composite material yeah. in lab as we see them in repair. Yeah. Uh, and how they save weight in safe areas and, and what they do. Mm. There could be a case where we don't actually see anything, but in the case of the canyon, we saw yeah. where they were weight saving around the middle side. Giant do it differently. They'll have the top, top of the top tube very thin yeah. and the sides fatter. Okay. Then that's a whole area of the top tube, whereas canyon will just lay up um, less carbon towards the middle and out. It's much of the same yeah, thing, just yeah. a different approach. So let's see what these guys do. So them and Giant do the same thing. This tube is exactly the same thickness here yes. as it is here. There's yeah. no thickness difference except that the top of the top tube yeah. is thin. Okay. See that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much thinner. See? Yeah, you can see. Nothing wrong with it flexing yeah. like that. Save your balls. <laughs> it's very important to have shock absorption through the bike. I think everything should have, from early on, I think that, that the cyclist should have been taken account of more. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the technology in carbon was there yet. And they're starting to do clever things like this. It's just give the, give the cyclist a, a, a better dialed in bike, which I think is really exciting. Yeah. So this is an already repaired version yeah. section here. Just different shapes, but yeah. similar, maybe slightly thicker. This is a s slightly racier model yeah. than this one. This is not their top range, so you're looking at slight differences here, um, to be fair to the Specialized. But um, but what we'll do is we're going to have a look at both of these uh, in terms of the layup and see how much jam is in this sandwich. What we're going to do is just have a look and see what the composite is doing and how the matrix, the matrix and the composite, the epoxy and the composite are how much compression there is in this area. And what we're looking for is less lines. Less epoxy means more binding okay. of the materials. In the next section, we mentioned the Trifox X10 a few times as a comparison. Now this is a cheaper Chinese carbon frame that we cut up in a previous video. So that's what we are referencing here. So let's look at the top tube. Look how beautifully that's compressed. That is very different to the Trifox. See, that, that's on the radius, huh? Quite a bit more effort gone and put into that. This is the, this is the flat edge. Look at that. That's not even the S-Works, that's just the standard specialized. Now we're on the stay. Okay, here you can see it's all one. It's all solid, isn't it? Solid material. It's beautifully compacted. Pretty much there's no, there's no jam in that sandwich. There's wall thickness differences here, because um, we might have cut through uh, a kink in the bladder on the inside. Mm which means that its actual wall thickness isn't that thick, it's just that we're on a ripple, on a, on a wrinkle yeah. on the inside, because as you can see inside there, it's quite common to have a lot of uh, lumps and bumps on the inside because they're just plastic yeah. bladders that are folding and uh, adjusting under the pressure. So You'll see it anywhere on the bike. It's impossible, the inside should, if anyone thinks the inside should be smooth, they're spending too much time doing the inside where you, yeah. you need to be focused on the compression ratios. And Ha <laughs> ha! 
destroyed. Let's take a closer look at the head tube of the frame. Now, as we take a look at this cutaway, you'll notice that the carbon layup is pretty standard. There's not really a whole lot to report here. Nothing out of the ordinary and nothing that will raise your eyebrows. The entry hole in the head tube is specifically designed for cable routing on this frame, much easier than routing the cable through the bars. Now, to put things into perspective, let's do a bit of comparing. Now, previously, I had the chance to take a hacksaw to a specialized Venge frame. Side by side, we see some interesting contrast. Specifically, we notice that the carbon around the bearings is significantly thinner on the tarmac from all angles. Now, before you start thinking it's a downside, remember that the Venge is a race orientated frame. It's designed for a whole different set of stresses and strains. Now, in another comparison, we previously examined the inside of a Trifox X10, which for those who don't know, is a value priced or cheaper carbon frame orientating from China. When we compare the Trifox's head tube to the Tarmax head tube, the bearing cups show a similar thickness in carbon. But it isn't just about the thickness of the carbon. Now moving on from the head tube, let's shift our attention to the top tube of the specialized tarmac frame. What we see here is a relatively consistent thickness across the board with the carbon thinning a little towards the top of the top tube. This aligns with what Rob observed when he cut the cross section earlier in the video. Now looking at either side of the frame, there's not much drama to report here. Everything seems to be in order. Here we've got a little top tube lineup. Now we have the Canyon CF SLX on the left, the Specialized Venge, then the current patient, the Specialized Tarmac. The way I see it, the Canyon appears to be thickest of the lot. It's closely followed by the Venge with the Tarmac bringing up the rear. This isn't a game of the thickest wins though. Each design choice is influenced by factors like the bike's intended use and performance. Time now to pivot to the seat tube. This is the vertical part of the frame that the bike saddle and seat post connect to. So pretty important. On first inspection, everything appears all good inside the seat tube. The quality is solid and consistent as you would hope. What we also have here is the mounting bolts or the rivets for the front derailleur. They look fairly neat and tidy riveting up top near where the seat post enters the carbon is noticeably thicker understandably so as we go down the seat tube the carbon thins out a little bit when we examine the carbon around the bottom bracket it is noticeably thicker than in other areas of the frame given the sheer amount of force that this part of the bike needs to withstand this comes as no surprise it's also pretty consistent smooth and uniform which is a theme that can be seen throughout most parts of this frame when we compare the tarmac and the trifox they appear quite similar However, there is a noticeable difference. The Trifox shows much more wrinkling, and it also has this metal piece that runs from one side of the frame to the other at the bottom bracket. At first glance, the Venge seems to absolutely dwarf the tarmac, indicating that there's more carbon in the Venge's bottom bracket by sheer size of the frame. As for wall thickness, the Venge does seem to edge the tarmac, but not by an astronomical margin. It's thicker, yes, but it's not as if the tarmac is lacking in this department. On the surface, everything on the down tube appeared to be in order, but then I took a closer look and something caught my attention. I noticed these slightly raised sections that look a little bit like bubbles. Upon this discovery, I sent a few pictures to Rob. Here is what he had to say. Now, initially I thought the largest of these delaminated areas was caused by my cutting, but after observing all the raised sections, I'm more inclined to think that this may have occurred before my grinder made its acquaintance with the frame. Do keep in mind that this frame is obviously a write-off and it was in Rob's graveyard. We dug it up, so to speak. So we're in the graveyard. So we don't know when this happened, what happened, or if it was caused by me. I'm just reporting what I can see. So now you have seen the inside of a specialized tarmac. Check out this video where we cut up the high-end specialized Venge and take a deep dive inside. There were some interesting findings in this one. 